We are now joined by CP, the franchise of Knicks Fan TV and SNY's The Putback. Okay, CP, the winning streak has come and gone, but did this nine straight wins, including two over Boston, change what you think this team's ceiling is? Yeah, Eamon, I, I think this team is a good team whose ceiling has yet to be determined. You know, the Knicks had a great week last week, beating the Boston Celtics twice in one week. It's very difficult to do so. They were able to do so at Madison Square Garden. Then in Boston, without Jalen Brunson, on the road, down by as much as 17 points and able to beat the Celtics in double overtime. That was very impressive. And then to beat the Nets as well as the Heat, two teams that are in the Knicks wheelhouse in terms of playoff positioning. Those were very important games. So to see the Knicks come out of that week 4-0 as part of a nine-game winning streak, that was impressive. And as I said, their ceiling has not yet been determined. Yeah, still kind of shocked they were able to pull that one out down in Miami. All the, all the craziness in that game. All right, Emmanuel quickly with the monster game on Sunday against Boston. He's averaging a little bit more than 22 a game in his last five. In your eyes, has he passed R.J. Barrett in the pecking order of importance on this Nick roster? Yes. Emmanuel quickly is the third most important player on this Knicks team. He's a jack of all trades for Tom Thibodeau. Tom Thibodeau, after that Celtics game, acknowledged Emmanuel quickly as his guy. And rightfully so, because Emmanuel quickly, he's the quarterback of the defense. He's their signal caller. His playmaking has, has improved. His decision making has improved. Only one turnover in that double overtime win against the Celtics. But most importantly, what he's doing in, over R.J. Barrett is shooting the ball consistently. In his last 10 games, Emmanuel quickly is averaging 18 points per game on 51% shooting from the field and 43% shooting from downtown. The consistency from quickly is why he's going to be closing a lot of games to finish out the season and into the playoffs as well. And they also feed off of his energy. When he's playing well, he's bouncing all over the place, and that's infectious for that Nick club. All right, this West Coast trip sounds tough, CP, but only the Kings have a better record than the Knicks right now, so what in your eyes would be a successful road trip for New York? The name of the game for this West Coast trip is going to be endurance because what was eminent, what was clear in this Knicks loss against the Hornets on Tuesday night was they looked a little bit tired. They looked a, a little bit of dead legs. The shots were short and they were shorthanded without Jalen Brunson once again. So it's going to be interesting to see when Jalen Brunson returns to this team and whether or not Tom Thibodeau opts to go a little bit longer it, with the bench because they're going to be tested on Thursday night against the now number two seed in the West in the Sacramento Kings and then back to back games in Los Angeles against the Clippers and Lakers. So this is going to be a big test for the Knicks because they're only one game up on the Nets for the fifth seed in the East and two games back of the Cavs for the fourth seed. So with 15 games left, this is going to be another test for the Knicks. All right, tough to forecast because Brunson's status is up in the air, but in your eyes, three and one, two and two, what makes a good road trip here from these four games? I'd say two and two.